you're looking for the best of the best, you've come to the right place. This 2023 Mercedes EQS 580 is quite simply the most comfortable SUV I've ever tested. It also looks great and has an interior that will blow you away. So let me tell you more. First, let's talk about the drive because like I said, this is the most comfortable SUV I've ever driven. And I'm not joking about that. I have tested a lot of SUVs, including some of the most high-end ones that cost $100,000 plus. There's something about this EQS SUV that, that will wow you. Everything about this drive is simply mesmerizing. It is so comfortable. The throttle is instantaneous yet it comes on lightly and it's just the right feel it's hard to describe with throttle you know you either have it or you don't a lot of cars they can't figure it out there's like a lag or it comes on too strong or the feel is is not right the the, the pedal is a little bit too stiff no this eqs throttle is simply amazing it's perfect, it's absolutely perfect. And whenever you need power, it comes on strong. Because this is a 580, you're getting 536 horsepower and 633 pound-feet of torque. Zero to 60, conservatively estimated, 4.5 seconds, although many reviewers have tested it and said it's closer to four seconds. So you have instant torque, plenty of power and around town this is so so comfortable now it's not just about the throttle the suspension my god it is mesmerizing it's mind-blowing how comfortable this suspension is of course this is a mercedes it uses air suspension and it is height adjustable but man I don't know what Mercedes did. It is so comfortable over anything. All the potholes, dips, imperfections, it handled it all perfectly. It is really, really comfortable. And keep in mind, this EQS 580 is riding on 21 inch wheels. Very big. The bigger the wheels, the less sidewall you're going to have with the tires, but that makes no difference with this drive. It is so, so comfortable. The steering also is quite nice. This is drive-by wire, so there's no direct link between the steering wheel and the front axle or the rear axle, but Mercedes made it so that you can't tell. It is super precise. There's no play, basically, at all in the steering wheel. The Mercedes just goes where you point, probably because of the all-wheel suspension, but the steering feel is just phenomenal. It just feels good and it's light. Of course, you could adjust it. There's different modes, driving modes, but I don't think you need to adjust that at all. Just in normal comfort, the steering feels fantastic. With EVs, brakes are a little bit finicky. Well, not so much with this EQS. So Mercedes gives you an option. On the digital gauge cluster, you could see normal recuperation or strong recuperation or no recuperation. Basically, you can turn off the regenerative braking. So if you like the car to coast after you let off the throttle, it will do so. So more or less, the EQS feels like a normal car. It doesn't feel like an EV car where it starts braking really quickly after you let off the throttle. Most people do not like that when they move to an EV car, but Mercedes is like, oh, we got you covered. If you do want that, you could go into strong recuperation. So when you let off the throttle, you could definitely feel the EQS break. But if you turn it to normal or no recuperation, you're just like coasting like normal. So that also adds to the drive. And when you're braking, it feels normal. It doesn't feel weird. A lot of hybrid cars, a lot of EV cars, the brake, it, it, it doesn't have that linear feel. It comes on sometimes very strong, like no sudden like input and all of a sudden the car comes to a brake really hard. 
and it's really hard to get that smooth braking, right, without the jerking. I don't have that problem with this EQS. So when you combine everything, the perfect throttle, the amazing steering, the miraculous suspension, plus the normal braking, this is the reason why the EQS is the best driving SUV I've ever tested, and it's not even close. This is miles ahead of anything else I've tested out there. This includes, I mentioned the GLS, the new X7, the huge Cadillac Escalade, all those six-figure plus SUVs. This is the best driving of them all not even in a contest. Now, I also did say that the interior will blow you away because when you step inside this EQS, it feels like you're in the future, like you're in a spaceship because your eyes can't not stare at this giant screen in front of you. So Mercedes calls this a hyper screen, 56 inches, basically, it stretches from the driver's side all the way to the passenger side, right? And there's three different screens, but they're all kind of merged together. So in front of you, you have a giant digital gauge cluster. It's about 18 inches. Then you have this giant screen, infotainment screen. I don't know how many inches. I think it's like 30 something inches. Then you have another 13 inch screen in front of the passenger. So you have this giant hyper screen and it really makes you feel like you're in a spaceship because it's angled and it's very bright and it's so customizable. The interface is very similar to the others, the MBUX, the latest version, but because this is the EV, there's a little bit more. The digital gauge cluster has a little bit more for EV. For example, there's no tachometer, but there's a power meter. Also, I talked about the recuperation, which you control with the paddle shifters, but this digital gauge cluster, just like all the other Mercedes, if you want to change it, you can. If you want to change it to just all navigation, sure. If you want to go off-road, which would be really silly with this SUV, you could do so. And there's a plethora of other screens you could choose from. And I didn't mention, but there's also a heads-up display, which also has a plethora of things you could look at. You could do the augmented reality one, which I have on by default. It's really hard to display with my GoPro, but it doesn't look like a normal heads-up display. There's something about it that makes you think it's more floaty in, your, in front of you. And you know, your lane keep assist, if you happen to be swerving off lane, it'll actually display like a big red line and with the same curvage as the road. So in addition to the giant screens, you also have a giant heads-up display. Now, as for the infotainment system, it's awesome. It's awesome. There's a few menu items to choose from, like your apps, your comfort, off-road, again, not recommending this car, <laughs> settings, and of course you get wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, and you get Mercedes Assistant feature, and you can control this a thousand different ways from ambient lights to how you want your lights to come on and off and your safety systems, and I could go on and on and on and on, and there's really, a whole lot going on. There's also EQ mode, which of course will tell you what your range is, your consumption, how much you wanna charge, and also give you tips on how to save your energy by turning down your AC or your seat comfort modes. Now, in terms of range, you might be wondering, what do you get with a beast of SUV like this? Well, this one, you get about 280 Five miles, which isn't too shabby, but it's under a 300 mile range, right? And a lot of people will like to compare this to say a Model X. And yes, it does have less range, but if you want it a little bit more, you can opt for an EQS 450, which gives you slightly less power, but a little bit more range. That one is 305 to be exact, but 285 isn't too shabby. And overall combined with the power that you're getting, the instant torque, think it's pretty darn good. And then you do also get a third screen and the third screen basically replicates the infotainment system for the passenger. So in case the passenger wants to select the music or put in the navigation or whatever, they can do so. And you could turn on that screen. You don't always have to leave it on. There's a dedicated button that can turn that on or off. Besides just the giant screens, the rest of the dash and the cabin 
It's just so elegant. I love the use of black trim, also aluminum. You see that theme everywhere. You see just perfect amount of aluminum with the vents, with the steering wheel, with the door panels across the dash. I mean, Mercedes, they know how to design interiors. This is one of the best interiors I have ever seen. Now, as for features besides the amazing tri-screen and heads-up display, you pretty much get everything. Dual sunroofs on top, home link buttons, wireless charger, you get heated and ventilated seats, of course, heated steering wheel. I mean, everything that you want, you get inside this EQS. Now, in case you're wondering, the size of the EQS is quite big, though not as big as the GLS, for example. This is using the same platform and the wheelbase as a EQS sedan, but this is taller, obviously. There's more headroom. There's more trunk room in the back. As for space, this is a large SUV, and it should be plenty, plenty for most families. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to yell like that, but I had a little bit of a straightaway, so I decided to test out the acceleration, and that may be maybe a mistake because there's a cop right up here, but I just tested going from about 25 to about 65 miles per hour, and it is very, very quick inside this EQS. It's not as fast as, say, a Model X Plaid, but still plenty fast. There's very little SUVs that can compete with this and when you're daily driving it's more than enough now as for seats the seats inside are pretty good not only do they look good but they feel very comfortable i feel like the seats up front is holding me in same thing seats in the back very comfortable what i love about the second row seats is the fact that the headrests have these little pillows so that's something new these days you see a lot of luxury cars include pillows for their passengers and it actually does make a big difference. I do like it. Second row space is also plenty big. You can see I have plenty of headroom in the back and plenty of leg room, so it's quite comfortable in the second row. Also, you do get climate controls, so that's nice. So far, I only talked about the good. Are there any negatives to this EQS? Yes, there's a few things that I find not so good. Let's start out with the buttons. First of all, there, <laughs> there's no buttons in here. Everything is capacitive touch. And I think Mercedes did this on purpose to try to make you feel like this is more futuristic. For example, there's no climate control buttons. Everything is in this integrated into this giant screen, which for the most part, I think works okay. So you see dual climate controls up front and there's a few menu items, auto, stuff like that. Pretty easy to figure out. But for some people, they may want to have a few buttons for the climate control. Okay, also radio, there's no radio knob or anything. It's integrated into the center console, it's there, and it's also on your steering wheel, but it's capacitive touch, so you have to use your finger and kind of just like wick it, <laughs> slide it, however you want, and it's not for everyone. There's no need to make everything capacitive touch. The same thing with, you know, your memory seats, your heated and ventilated seats, right? Capacitive touch. Your slider for the dual sunroof is capacitive touch. The rear, also the same thing. And you know what else is really funny is the seat controls for, for this EQS. Mercedes has the seat controls on the door panels. Normally, it's really easy, right? You just press back and forward or up and down, and you could feel it move. This one is also capacitive touch. So even though it looks like a regular Mercedes seat control, it's not. It doesn't move. So you just kind of like have to guess how things are gonna go when you push on it. I'm not a fan of that. I have nothing against capacitors. I think there are some places where it makes sense, but when you just do the whole interior like that, I know that that's not gonna be for everyone. Also what's strange is this SUV, this one in particular, is over $120,000. So you would figure every single option is already included. That's not the case. For rear passengers, they don't have heated or ventilated seats. You could see the area where the button should be, but they're not there because it's not included. I find that pretty ridiculous. Also, what's strange is you can't fold down the second row seats 
from the second row. You can only do so in the trunk area. There's two controls or two switches in the trunk area. That's the only way. And I was looking at, usually you'll see some buttons or a seat back a lever or something like that. No, it doesn't exist in the second row. So that is also a head scratcher. What's also a head scratcher is the fact that you have dual moon roofs that could only be operated from the front. Rear passengers, let's say if they only, only wanted to open up the back moonroof or, or at least get even to just remove the, the sunshade cover, they cannot. It's, there's no button. You have to do it from up front. And the way you do it is they both open up simultaneously. Again, doesn't need to be like that. On the outside too, these pop-out door handles, which is copied from Tesla, obviously. Every manufacturer somehow thinks that they need to have pop-out handles and they don't work all that well. Sometimes they just go back in and they just don't open and I'm pressing on them really hard and they just don't. It's like periodically they work and then they don't. If you use a key fob and you lock and unlock, they always open or close. But let's say you have your key fob in your pocket it doesn't always work the way you expect it to. I don't know why every manufacturer feels like they have to copy these pop-out handles. You can design them to be flush, like BMW, for example. BMW still have regular handles, but they're designed to be flush against the door panel. Why can't Mercedes do that? I don't know. Now, one last thing about the trunk area is I kind of expected more room. It's very long, but not as wide as you would think. Also, there's not a lot of hidden storage underneath. There's a little bit. But one thing that has me thinking is, why is there no switch to drop the rear for easy loading? Most SUVs, for example, even the GLS, has a button to drop the rear so that loading in is much easier for heavier things. This EQS does have air suspension. So why can you not drop the rear? Don't know, it's missing. As for pricing, there are nine different trim levels to the brand new EQS SUV. The first thing you have to decide is, do you want less power with more range or more power and less range? Less power is the 450, which gives you about 335 horsepower, but over 300 miles of range. That starts out over $100,000. The base EQS 450 Plus Premium is over $100,000. Keep that in mind. And there's various trim levels to the 450, then the 450 Matic, 4Matic Premium, then you have the 450 Plus Exclusive, Plus Pinnacle, and then finally you have the 450 4Matic Exclusive, and that one is already over $110,000. Then you move to the 580s. The base 580, which comes with 4Matic automatically, starts around $125,000. Then you have the exclusive and Pinnacle, and the Pinnacle tops out over $130,000. No matter how you slice it, the brand new EQS SUV is expensive. But is it worth it? Let me give you my final thoughts. Well, like I said, if you're in the market for the best of the best, this is the most comfortable drive you'll ever experience inside any SUV. It is that good. The drive is simply amazing. There's no other way to describe it. I didn't talk a lot about the looks because, you know, looks are subjective. I've been showing you guys clips about how this SUV looks. All the EQ SUVs and sedans pretty much has the same bubbly look. It's kind of futuristic. It's not that aggressive. So I'll leave it to you on the looks. But overall, I think I do like the looks. But as for the interior, the interior is also very luxurious. I love the way things look and feel inside here. The use of leather, ambient lighting, the screens, right? The dash design, which also is floating. So there's actually some storage space underneath. I think the interior is really nice. And of course, when you compare the SUV to the sedan version, the SUV gives you more headroom, so you feel bigger and there's more trunk room, right? So I definitely, my preference is definitely to go with the SUV rather than the sedan. Also, you do get a lot of features as well. The heads-up display, the tri-screens, and then of course, everything else that you would ever want inside the SUV. So you get plenty of features that come standard. 
but it's not a perfect SUV. There are many things I already nitpicked on. Also, this one doesn't have three rows of seats, which some of you guys are looking for. And now that you've heard how much this SUV is, so it really depends on if you think this whole package is worth it or not. There's not that many people that can afford a $130,000 SUV like this one that I'm driving today. So what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments below. Smash out a like, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more car reviews like this.